Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. I'm starting this small little series on DaVinci Resolve. On learning DaVinci Resolve, basically learning the scopes, learning the tools, learning how to color grade in DaVinci Resolve, uh, kind of going over all the basics and getting into some maybe intermediate and maybe even a couple little advanced features as well. In fact, kind of getting a project from a, uh, an editing software back to or, or into DaVinci Resolve is a little bit of an intermediate process to, to be honest. Uh, sometimes depending on, depending on if you have effects uh, involved and uh, keeping everything kind of high quality keeping everything keeping all the the uh, basically the color bit depth at a high quality if you're using DSLR cameras or mirrorless cameras it's a little bit different different process it really depends on if you're using 8-bit color 10-bit color whatever it depending on raw footage depends on what you're using this one I'm going to be going through uh, raw footage if you're going to be uh, and a lot of the concepts will transfer are, are very similar if you're going to be using other cameras besides something that shoots raw but in this case I'm showing how to use uh, red footage here and with this I'm using the uh, Adobe Premiere Pro to do the editing. I'm going to show you how to kind of get the effects flattened, get it flattened, and get everything kind of prepped to go back to re to go to Resolve and do the color grading. DaVinci Resolve is free to use, which is amazing. It's an amazing software. Uh, you can, if the studio version costs money, that's more if you're working on a big server. And there's some also a few features inside of a inside of the studio version that is not accessible within the free version. But the free version is pretty just. I mean, it's a pretty amazing. It does almost anything you need to. So what I'm doing first here is I'm going to use DaVinci Resolve to create proxies for Premiere Pro, for editing in Premiere Pro. There's also the process in Premiere Pro where you can do the, the proxy workflow that's proprietary to, to, with the Premiere Pro. I typically use the old school fashion, which is either using Resolve or using the old school fashion with Premiere, which is actually just exporting out the footage rather than doing it all within the software of Premiere Pro. But here, uh, there is a benefit to using DaVinci Resolve to create your proxies, and we'll kind of get into that. So let's, let's show how to do that here. I'm going to start a new project here. I'm going to right-click on an untitled project and say, save as and uh, the, the footage that we're working with is called the biscuit edit the biscuit uh, short film so I'm going to say biscuit proxies here save that now one thing that you got to understand with the DaVinci Resolve is understanding aspect ratios because a colorist is somebody who just doesn't do the coloring but they do the finishing and one of the finishing things that you do is uh, is um, find out what aspect ratio your final film is going to be in and you've got to adjust all the clips to that depending on if, whether, whether they shot in that aspect ratio or different as aspect ratio for different reasons sometimes they'll shoot in a wider aspect in you know, an aspect ratio that's taller than the uh, and, and frame for a wider aspect ratio because they want a little bit of room to be able to, to, to tilt up and down if you need need to adjust headroom if the headroom wasn't quite right. Now these ones were shot here. Let, let's, I'm going to show you how to figure out your aspect ratio here because this is going to be important when we create proxies. We're creating proxies for an editor here. This is uh, The resolution on this was a 5K. It's a 5120 and we're going to divide that by uh, it's horizontal aspect. It's horizontal pixels, 2560, and you get an aspect ratio of two to one. Two to one. They shot a little bit wider than they wanted it. So this is actually the the final uh, movie aspect ratio is going to be 1.85 to one. So not quite as wide as two to one. Two to one is. I'm not sure why it's typically used in like a lot of music videos for television. They shoot, they'll shoot two to one. Now the aspect ratio, uh, two to one, is an aspect ratio that, that was called a uh, univisium. Uh, univisium was one that was uh, between the two standards of 1.85 to one, which is an aspect ratio that's uh, most commonly used in in cinema, and uh, two point. 2.40 to 1. It was a kind of a compromise, especially for television. They used it a lot for television to kind of compromise, kind of a compromise between those wider aspect ratios of 1.85 to 1 and 2.40 to 1 or 2.39 to 1. This was shot 2 to 1 aspect ratio, but let's, and the cinematographer said, well, we want this finished in 1.85 to 1. So let's say they're going to be showing this on a movie screen in a film festival or something, they want this in 1.85 to 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert all the, the footage, and it's kind of interesting, one of the one of the clips that they have here, before they set the camera, you notice that is not as wide. Look at this when we double click on that, see how this is a wider aspect ratio than this one right here. They unintentionally shot the first clip in 16 by 9. They did frame for 1.85 to 1 though so that means we're going to be cropping off the top the top and bottom of this because they did frame for that properly and the final aspect ratio is going to be uh, 1.85 to 1. With that in mind I'm going to right click on this uh, project here and go to project settings and we're going to go to our timeline resolution. We're going to set this at what resolution we want to export our proxies to. And uh, we're going to pull this down and go down to 1.85 to 1. There's the flattened, there's the flattened D, uh, DCI here. DCI is a true uh, 2K where th this is the most common that you'll see movies in. It's actually a little less than 2K when you see movies in the theater. Uh, but this is when uh, cinematographers get really nitpicky and they want the DCI. They want, they want true 2K. This is the true 2K aspect ratio here. Uh, 2048 uh, by 1080. And that is... Let's take our calculator here, and we're going to go 2048 divided by 1080, and we get 
a 1.89 to 1. Uh, the other aspect ratio is 1.85 to 1. This one's a little bit wider. Uh, both of these are perfectly cinema. cinema they're, they're built for the cinema screen, but uh, this is the true 1.85 1, 1. to 1. But let's say the cinematographer wants it a true 2K at 1.89 to 1. This is just a little bit slightly wider. It's a little nitpicky, but so we're going to export this uh, our video, our proxies out at this aspect ratio for the editor. So I'm going to save that. That project is set up now. I'm going to double click on this and open it up. Close our scopes there. Uh, we're going to go to media and import our media here. So I'm going to go to my folder. I'm going to go to the red footage. I'm going to right click. I'm going to grab card one here. If you want to keep things organized, if you drop them into this area right here, this will just bring in, first of all, I the resolution does not meet the resolution that I have. So I'm going to say, don't change. I want to keep my 2K resolution and not bump it up to 5K. But if you just drop the folder down into this area right here, it just pulls all the clips in and just into uh, a big mess of clips here. Uh, this is, doesn't have very much footage, but if you're trying to keep things organized, I'd recommend dragging your folder over here to the master window here and drop it. Uh, once again, don't change. And it will keep everything organized in that folder. Now I've got the folder, and then I've got the red folder, and then I've got the media inside that. So this helps keep things organized if you want. So I'm going to drag this folder down, and we had two cards for this shoot, uh, two rolls for this shoot, so the one and two. So now I've got the media imported, and I don't need audio right now. This is just the footage from the red camera that I'm using. Once you get the media imported, you can go to Edit, and we're going to drag this stuff into a timeline. So I'm going to go to Card 1, open up my red footage, grab all that footage, and I'm going to drag it and drop it down inside my timeline here. Now I want to go to the end of my timeline and put the put Card 2 in here. By the way, Shift-Z, these are old Final Cut Pro shortcuts. If you're familiar with the Final Cut Pro 7 and earlier, the, the shortcuts are the same in, in DaVinci Resolve, which is cool. So Shift-Z shift will zoom out your timeline so you see your entire timeline there. And Command minus and plus or Control minus and plus on a PC. Uh, I'm going to grab my Card 2 here and grab the footage and drag that stuff in as well. Now I've got all my footage in the timeline. The next step i got to do here, now you want to do this in your editing area and not in your color area. You, we're going to zoom up our footage here. Uh, you can do this manually. You can go under Transform under the Inspector. If you don't see the Inspector here, just click on Inspector and it'll bring it up and you have some zoom functions for your clips. Because the aspect ratio, notice the aspect ratio here is wider than this first clip that they shot. Was, it was 16 by 9, so we were getting pillar boxing on the side. And as we move into these ones, we're getting letter boxing on the top and bottom. Because this was actually 2 to 1 and this was 16 by 9, so they could kind of made a mistake on the first clip, then then adjusted it and fixed it. The cinematographer says that they want everything in uh, this, this 2K aspect ratio, uh, the 1.89 to 1. So that's what we're going to outfit everything for. So a way you can do that, you can do this manually and go through on each clip, but this, there's an easier way to do that. You go down to this little gear icon in the bottom right hand corner of the screen here, the project settings. This is also found under file on project settings, but I'm going to just click, that's a little quick tab to click on that little gear down there and it brings it up. And I'm going to go to image scaling and we're going to set up, uh, we're going to set up this for the entire project. We're going to tell it to uh, scale Rather than scale entire image to fit, which it does there, it shows you your entire image, we're going to scale full frame with crop. This will crop your images and fit it in. It'll zoom this out until it gets to the edge just perfectly, and it will do it the same with the letterbox images. With the, It does it with the pillar box and the letterbox images all together. I'm going to hit save, and look what happens. Everything has scaled up perfectly here. So it just scaled up just enough to get rid of those letter boxes and, the, and, and now everything fits perfectly. And this is actually the way the movie was framed. They, they shot this intentionally to be framed this way in the 1.89 to 1 aspect ratio. Next step, uh, we're going to go to color. You don't have to do this when you're creating proxies, but I, I really like to do this for proxies where you add a LUT and give the, the editor just something that kind of looks a little less flat. Like these images are kind of flat. They um, This looks like it might be in some sort of log format. But what I want to do is, I, first of all, I, I want to start fresh here. I want to get everything to log format here. So this is raw data. If you don't have raw data, you don't need to do this, but you can still apply a LUT. Uh, but since this is raw data, you have this little camera icon down here that you can individually do clips and change their raw data. This one, obviously, look how contrasty it looks and look how dark it looks. The camera was set at the improper ISO when they started, and then they kind of adjusted for that. But I want to just be able to access all the raw data here and tell this to read it off as like log footage here, uh, which will give us a very flat profile and our ISO and adjust our ISO for all of our for all of our clips here. So I'm just going to do this just overall here. I'm going to go down to the little gear icon here and click on that for my project settings. Under this I'm going to go to camera raw and this is your raw settings and you can do this for your entire project here. Right now uh, we are working with, it has different, different uh, types of uh, raw cameras in here and I'm going to go to red. Red's the one I've got. Uh, decode quality half resolution, that's fine. It just plays back in half resolution. It doesn't affect the quality of the original camera footage. One thing I want to check here is I want to go on a decode using, and I'm going to say project. We're doing an overall project setting and telling all the clips in here to read this these raw settings. We're going to tell it to read these raw settings. Uh, color space, 
I'm going to do the latest uh, red color here. Uh, we don't want our colors being super saturated like a Rec. 709 right now because I want to do a little bit of my own adjustment. So I'm going to use red color 4. And I'm going to go under the gamma curve. And this is the more important part here is setting this for log. I'm going to use the red log film here. That's going to give everything a very flat profile. Uh, we need to, we want to adjust the ISO settings because the ISO settings on some of these things uh, were too low. And, I, and the 320 is, is too low. This was natively shot at 800 ISO. Uh, we don't need to adjust for really any exposure yet for all of these overall clips. But the color temperature uh, defaulted to 5600. I'm going to set this at 3200. It was shot under tungsten lights. So we're doing 3200 color temperature here. So I hit save. And all of a sudden, look at that, that changed to a flat profile. Everything is a very flat profile now. And now I can do a little bit of color grading to export this out to an editor here. All right, so with this, I'm not going to be doing any significant grading right now because I'm just uh, sending out clips uh, for the for an editor here. But what we can do is I can, I'm going to just select one clip and kind of do some adjustments on the on one clip. And then I'm going to apply that to the rest of the clips here. Uh, so first of all, uh, since we're just doing a quick grade here, you can actually just apply a LUT, uh, which is a pre it's like an already created it's like an already created color grade for you here i'm going to right click and go to LUTs and we're going to go to uh, 3d LUT and we're going to choose there's some nice uh, film looks that they have in here i'm going to just do like a fuji film let's try, try the 1055 let's try the first one here no let's go down here try that one Ooh, and I, I like that one. Uh, that, that, that's a good one there. It gives some good, good contrast. It cools it off a little bit. doesn't make it as warm. So actually, that looks really good. If you need to do some minor adjustments, you can add a new node here. You can do Option S or Alt S if you're on a PC. S as in snake. And you can add a, and you can do some like exposure adjustments here. Say if one shot was too overexposed and one's are underexposed, you can do some adjustments here, and just kind of get it just set for for the editor so they're not looking at a kind of an ugly flat image there. So I like that look there. I, I like that LUT. So what I'm going to do on that shot here, once so this shot is already has a, a LUT added. So I'm going to hit Command A or Control A to select all these here. First of all, I select this one and do Command uh, Command A or Control A. It selects everything. I can deselect this one. I'm going to hold down Command or Control and click on this one to deselect it. Now, with all those selected there, I'm going to move my mouse over this. And if you have one of those crappy wireless Mac mices, throw it in the garbage. To pick it up, just drop it in the garbage and go get a real mouse that has a middle click. You need it for DaVinci Resolve. And don't, don't be asking questions on, on, don't be posting questions saying, hey, how do I middle click with my uh, with my nice Mac wireless mice? I'll say, throw it in the garbage, go get a real mouse that has a middle click and use it. I like Macs as much as the next person, but I but their, their mice are not friendly for doing, for doing production work. So I'm going to move my uh, mouse over this and I'm going to middle click. And it just added that grade to all of my footage now. And if you want to be really friendly to the editor, you can kind of quickly go through each clip here. Just kind of skim through each clip and look at it. And you can keep it on the same 3D light here if you want to. Or you can add a new node. I'm just, let's just, you can keep it. I'm just going to keep it right here on the same node. But uh, this one's a little bit overexposed. So I'm just going to bring down the exposure on that. Go to the next one. See, and that one's way overexposed there. Even though it's got the LUT applied. So I'm going to bring the uh, gamma way down on that. And just adjust so it's acceptable for the editor to edit with. So it's not very distracting. That one's a little bit overexposed. So I'm just going to kind of go through each one, one by one, and just uh, fix exposure on these. That one looks good. That one looks good. And kind of play through it just to make sure. Yeah, that one looks good, looks good, and so on. And that one looks overexposed. So now that I've done some minor adjustments on these things, this is ready for creating uh, proxies to send to the editor. So I'm going to go to Deliver now. And we're going to export all these clips out in our timeline to have an individual clip. Ooh, that one looks a little dark, so i got to fix that one there. Let's go back to Edit, or let's go back to Color, and adjust the exposure on this one. Get some more, pump up some more exposure on that one. Just pump up the gamma. There we go. All right, so Deliver. Kind of skim through this, just to make sure everything looks good. Everything's looking good. And if the editor complains about something being overexposed or underexposed, you can actually just export out a file that will directly replace your old file. And if they've done any editing, it just updates it, which is nice. So now I'm going to go up to file name. We don't want to, what, very important for proxy footage, you need the, to reattach to the high quality, you need the proxy files to be, have the exact same name with the exception of extension. It doesn't have to have the exact same extension like .mov or .r3d or whatever the extension is, but you need to have the exact same name, exact same time code, and exact same audio qualities properties as well. So pretty easy setup in here. First of all, we're gonna go up to this export options here. We're gonna to go to individual clips. We don't want this to export as one big fat clip. We want individual clips. And now we're gonna to go to file. We're gonna go through all three of these here. I'm gonna make the file be the same as the source name. Very important. Or your, or your file or your footage will not reconnect to the high quality footage. So source name is going to be the same. 
going to go to audio. And uh, this is re this is very important as well. This is this red footage does have audio attached. Uh, what I would recommend when you're shooting on a red, just don't set up your camera to shoot audio at all. If you're especially if you're doing cinema stuff, you just want to shoot the visuals. Because right here, this doesn't even have recorded audio on. It's just a lazy setup on the on the cinematographer's fault. So let's go to audio. And we're going to go under channels because this has two mono channels, which is weird. It's not a stereo channel. So I'm going to tell this, do it the same as source. Just duplicate those audio properties. That's fine. And then it will reconnect easily to the high quality footage later on because it, it will match the audio properties uh, with two mono channels. I'm going to go to video and we're going to use QuickTime. And if, you, if you're on a PC, you're not going to be able to do QuickTime ProRes. You can do this in Premiere. Premiere will export out to ProRes on a PC. But unfortunately, DaVinci Resolve still won't export out to ProRes on a PC. So if you're on a Mac, I'm going to recommend using ProRes. ProRes is great. It's a great format. If you're on a PC, a really good format to use is DNX. Uh, DNX, either HR, H, DNX HD is great for proxy footage. And this even has... You can use DNX HR. The, the only downfall with this, though, is this does not have the resolution. It does not have a uh, default resolution that's a, a two, that is 1.89 to 1. You can do a custom, and you can just type in 2048 if you're using DNX. And there's our resolution right there. And this, this works just as well as ProRes. It's a really nice, clean codec that's been used by Avid. That's an Avid codec that is available for PCs. So if you don't have the, if you don't have ProRes option, go ahead and use DNX HR and then type in your custom resolution on a PC. But since we're on a Mac, I'm going to do Apple ProRes. I'm going to do type and I'm going to do proxy. I have a really nice proxy format. And I've got the resolution set at the same resolution as my timeline here, 2048. And those are going to be my proxy files there. And this will uh, be a very smooth codec. It'll run on even slower systems. And it'll be, re and it'll be really not, it'll be really e easily edited footage here. So I'm going to add all my footage to render queue. So we went through the settings on file, audio, and video and got everything set up. Add to render queue. It's going to ask for a location. I've already done my exports here, but I'm going to choose a location here. By the way, one option you have here is file if you want to have the same folder. Preserve the, you can say place clips in separate folders here, and it will it'll organize things into the same folder. This is such a small project that it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to hit add to render queue, choose a location. I've got this uh, biscuit resolve proxies here, and I'm going to just say open, and now you can start render. I've already exported it out, so. Once you hit start render, it will export all your footage out. And this on my laptop, this is real time. It takes about like a, it, it takes about a half an hour to encode all these, all, about a half an hour's worth of footage. Uh, so anyway, so I'm gonna let, let that process happen, and then we'll come back and show you the next step here. All right, so I'm gonna quit Resolve here. After you're done uh, encoding, I'm gonna hit quit Resolve. Say yes, I want to save my changes in case I need to come back and fix something. We're gonna go to Premiere here. I'm gonna close down this old project here going to start a new project and I'll just call this biscuit edit biscuit short film edit Hit okay and now whatever software you're in if you're in Final Cut Pro if you're in uh, Premiere Pro whatever software you're in just make sure that you have the option of being able to export out to an XML file or an EDL file because you're going to in order to get this back to DaVinci Resolve Final Cut Pro is able to do that Premiere is able, able to do that I'm going to be showing you how to do it inside of uh, Premiere though so I'm going to grab my folder here, import that folder, my proxies. And here's my files here. These are now MOV files, but they've got the exact same name as the, as the names in, in red. They just have different extensions now. Exact same time code uh, as the original files as well. So this is, this is going to match up perfectly with our high quality footage later on. And there was audio shot for this. Here's my sound folder, import that. Now I've got my footage. I've got my audio. These two things need, and now I need to sync these things. I've got different lessons on how to sync them. But right now, this is not a, a, a tutorial on editing as much as it is as much as it is just getting a project to resolve. So I'm gonna. So now the project will be synced and edited and sound mixed and uh, and I'm gonna come back in the next episode. I'm gonna be showing you kind of a finished project with some effects that have been created because there's one little effect that needs to be done at the end. But if you look at the footage now, this is all LUT's been applied. The footage looks really nice. It's not matched. I mean, there's some stuff like right here, it's too dark that needs to be matched later on in color grading, but it's good enough that this can be edited together. And the editor has a nice uh, 1.89 to one aspect ratio and has a LUT and this is 2K footage. And this can be edited, sm edited smoothly, but yeah, we'll come back and we'll show you the next process after the, all the editing and the effect work's been done. Done. We're going to show you how to get a project from uh, from Premiere to Resolve.